Hey folks, welcome. It's Michael Cafiero, solar instructor for Clean Edison, and I want to go over how important it is to avoid shade when installing solar electric systems. And I'm going to use, for example, simple string inverter consists of one or multiple series strings of modules plugged in. When you plug in series, plus to minus, you build voltage. So I won't get into the details of this specific system, but for the uh, sake of this example, I'm going to, I've uh, I got 30 modules over here on the roof. I put one on the bottom to demonstrate a point too, but traditional system you could fit on a residence, it's something like this, it's something like 30 modules. And if you're lucky enough, um, you've got them laid out physically in rows of 10, and then if uh, many times your electrical design to fit into the voltage window for the inverter will be plugging them in at 10 anyway. And how easy that would be if you had three strings of 10 and you had three rows or three strings of 10 uh, modules sitting on the roof. So I want to demonstrate three, um, three points about to help you remember how important it is to avoid shade and to, if you have partial shade, it's okay. If you have significant shade, there are no devices out there, including microinverters or DC to DC optimizers, that are going to make the shade go away. Partial shade can be mitigated by these other devices. But let me go to this traditional string inverter, where you're going to have, in this case, three series strings of 10 modules. And I want to show you what could happen uh, if you don't go out of your way to plug in the modules. You always want to plug in like modules together, and you also want to plug in modules that are shaded at the same time on the same string, or you could be throwing away a lot of performance. Now here's a typical module. It's got six columns. Columns, if you forget, just think of like columns on a building, up and down. And then the rows are what's going across here. So here's the module where it's sitting, and this is called portrait mode. And you know, some, you know there's some printing stuff probably. Even if the module is, is sitting in landscape mode, these are still going to be the columns, and then these will be the rows. It's important not to shade a row, as in doing this. Shading a module this way, any, any row, so any like one of each column, is enough to basically shut the module off, and the other ones it was plugged into in the string. Okay, there, modules have what's called bypass diodes built in. They typically have six, or they have three. If they've got six bypass diodes, one bypass diode accounts for each column. If they've got three, one's going to take care of two at, a time, two at a time. And so what the bypass diodes do is they allow the current uh, to bypass the shaded, the shaded columns in case that comes up. So if you had a little bit of shade on one module, let's say here, you'd only lose that one-sixth or one-third or so of the module. But when you go ahead and shade the entire module, basically shut it off. So let me, let me show you. So if this, um, if this is a regular system, there were no shade, this would be fine to plug them in like this. 10, 10, and 10. No problem, you still perform. Now, in my extreme example, now we have devices, Solar Pathfinder, Solmetric Sun Eye, there's some apps that do it and other devices out there where at any time of day, any day of the year, as long as there's enough light to take your picture, you can analyze the shade at a particular site the entire year. A lot of companies will just be lazy, they'll just take a picture, maybe the four quarters of the roof in the middle and say, ah, this site is about 20% shaded. So that's not bad, we got 80% of sunlight. But let me show you an example now. I'm going to shade like 5 to 20% of the roof, and we're going to lose most of it. So if there were no shade, this would be fine. Now, if, for example, your shade analysis tool uh, told you that from September to March, like the, the worst six months, so to speak, from sunrise until noon for half the year, there's shade on these three modules because of, let's just say, a tree over here. A tree over there shading those three modules in the morning for half the year. And then there happens to be a vent pipe or something over here that shades these four. And then there's another something over there that shades these three modules. Up until noon for half the year. 
If you had left the modules plugged in 10, 10, and 10, just like they are now, from sunrise till noon for half a year, the entire roof is off. These couple in the shade, basically shutting off these 10. These few, shading off these 10. And th these couple shaded are taking out this 10. It's not almost, it's not always 100%. But it's very close, and I've seen it. I've done it in the field. I've seen it in the field. I've done it in class, where shading, even like five percent of a module, like one row, is enough to cut the whole module off. And again, it affects the rest of the string. So if you, so when you do your shade analysis, you don't just take a general picture of it, because like this really isn't a lot of shade on this roof, but it's enough to shut the thing off for half the year in the morning. So if you do your shade analysis, you're really supposed to take your photograph, your shade analysis pictures where every module is. And then you might be able to realize, oh wait, these three and these three and these four, they're shaded at the same time. And then you'll go through the trouble and you'll plug it in. These three, and you've got the blue little wire on there and you'll spend five hours. These three, these three, I'm sorry, four, and these three. If they're all plugged in on one string, when that shade occurs half the year from sunrise until noon, you're only losing one third of your roof. The rest, the other two thirds, the other two strings can still produce. So I think I conveyed that point. But let me um, give you two more examples to reinforce it. Okay? Let's say there's no shade. So we can just go back to our whatever we want to do here. Sorry about the mess. If there was absolutely no shade on the modules, you still want to go out of your way and plug like modules in on the same string. Many modules come with power tolerances of plus or minus 5%. So if you buy a 250 watt module, some of them are 240, and some of them are 260. And you can get flash catches from the factory, or you can take some um, between $2,000 and $6,000, some of these amp testing kits, and you can test the modules. And if you realize, quite coincidentally, wow, perfect, 10 of them are 240 waters, and 10 of them are 250 waters, and 10 of them are 260 waters, then just make sure you plug the 240 watt modules in together with each other, the 250s together and the 260s together. Because if you scattered about a 240 watt module in this string, the 260s and one there and one there, they're going to work to the lowest uh, output, all of the modules. You'll bring them down. The, the, the weaker modules don't get brought up by the better modules. They get brought down. Much like batteries. You don't want to put an old battery with new ones. It's going to bring the, bring the new ones down. It's not going to bring itself back up. Okay? So, and um, to not be politically, religiously correct, they're like, there's cells in these modules, 60 or 72 cells. You have one continuous daisy train of cells. If there's 72 cells times 10, there's 720 cells. It's like the old Christmas tree lights. If one were out, you basically stop the flow. It's kind of as bad as that. Now, the bypass diodes help you. Remember, if there's significant shade, just don't put anything there. A lot of systems I've seen be much better off if they had less modules. I've seen a lot of houses where there's a module sitting in the shade of a chimney like all day long, and I wonder, how many other modules have been lost by that? So please remember to keep like modules, that is modules that are similar in output, but also modules that have the same amount of shade occurring at the same time on the same string. Uh, again, the string will be a product of its weakest link. And if one module is shaded, the entire string is basically off or, or very uh, poorly affected by a little bit of shade. Now, just to reinforce the point, something that most installers probably wouldn't go out of their way to do, but I just want to make the point about putting like modules together. And maybe if you imagine like 10 stacks of 10 together, it would be easier. But let's say there's absolutely no shade, and the modules are exactly 250 watts plus or minus zero. They're all exactly the same. Now, this it's going to refer to some more principles we get into in advanced uh, solar training. But let's say everything is the same, big wall of modules, 10 by 10. If you really wanted to go out of your way to plug in the modules that were like, you would actually go and plug the outside modules in a string and kind of work your way towards the inside. Because if you think about it, the modules on the outside, they're cooler, which is actually going to mean that they might be producing a little bit more volts. And they're also more likely to get some reflection or more light. So that's more amp. So the same exact module 
just being on the outside of the ray uh, could be producing more than the hot, uh, light, slightly less sunny module, so to speak, in the middle. Now, that's, that's being very detailed, but just to prove the point, I, if I really had the time and all the modules were exactly the same, I could be plugging in the outside modules because they'll be cooler and brighter, and then I'd be working my way towards the inside just to stay with the theme of keeping all the modules similar, getting similar weather, similar shade, similar temperature, keep them all on the same string. So it, it goes way beyond just simple spring sizing. Uh, the inverter is saying the voltage of 10 modules is okay. You really got to go out of your way. If you don't take a couple of pictures, a couple of shade analysis pictures of the roof, you basically take at least one picture, one shade assessment for every module, and then you can notice when the modules are shaded at the same time and remember to put them in the same strength together. And also just, you know, when you look at an array, the way it's sitting on the roof, you really don't know the way it's plugged in. And hopefully, as you get into installing your systems, you're going to go out of the way and get that design correct so you can have your installation correct. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in the next series.